Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to a, well, I've already opened the box because I wanted to make sure that everything was okay, but I'm opening this box of wonderful Santorini stones. They're actually kind of a tile type of stone. They're real stone all the way through. And I got them from Woody Co. Incorporated in Holiday, Florida. And they are probably the best price that I found online for the Santorini stones. And you're going, well, what the heck are Santorini stones? They are this amazing surface to paint on. So to paint your, <laughs> to paint rocks, to paint like canvases almost, because look at the size of this. So pretty. There we go. In person, it looks like it's just a total layer of little sparkly shininess. It is so neat. But this box this was a $50 box of rocks. I know, I bought a box of rocks. $50 worth. But I have got 16 beautiful pieces and they just charged by the pound. So I told them how much I wanted and they hand wrapped in bubble wrap all of the pieces. They went through and hand picked them out I told them the size. I think next time I will tell them a little bit smaller. I uh, have a piece here oh, yeah, that I already went and rinsed off. It's a little bit closer to the size that I want. This one's even a little bit big. And I was testing permanent marking pen. Permanent marking pen actually writes on this and doesn't smear. And this is the Pit Artist Pen, so it's not going to fade either. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking this rock, and I want to do something sort of autumn. So I was playing around in my sketchbook last night, and I did these little autumn leaves. Real pretty picture on this rock. But I'm going to use watercolor pencils. There is a group on Facebook that does watercolor pencils on rocks. I was so surprised. I thought, oh, well, there's no way you could do watercolor pencils on a rock. But I thought that you wouldn't be able to do an artist pen on a rock either. And it works just fine. I have not done the watercolor pencil on the rock yet. So this is an experiment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sepia. This is a size S pit artist pen. And it's a dark sepia. So it's a dark brown. And I think that will work really well for this because these are autumn leaves. So I am going to, and I'm not drawing it on with a pencil first because I don't know how pencil would erase on this. And I don't want to have any of that um, gray graphite on because I don't want it to mix with my colors. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go boop. That's the stem all the way up to the point of the leaf. And now I'm just going to, it's basically an upside down heart with little jaggy edges. So I'm taking it from the stem. I'm gonna come around and then I'm going to give it some little jaggedy edges out to the point, come back, and just some little jaggedy edges like this. And I'm not worried about putting all of the details in. I just wanted that center of the stem, just about like that. Now I'm going to get a second leaf in, so I'm going to take this, and the middle of this leaf is actually coming up behind that leaf. So you see how I drew it up to here where it hit the leaf and then I stopped and I picked up on the other side of the leaf 
with that center vein. And now this one I think is going to be up about here. And again, it's just sort of a little jaggedy edge coming up to a point and then a little jaggedy edge. Don't forget this little bit right here that matches up. Hmm. Yeah, I do want another one. It's going to be little though. I'm going to have this one coming this way and down low. So I'm not being a slave to my original painting. I am using it as inspiration for this one. And that is how you end up with so many different beautiful paintings that all go together. Now this one is going to come across and, and it's just going to tuck behind down low. Now I'm going to take some colors here. And these are the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. And I am going to grab the walnut brown, the light green, I think a dark red, or maybe I'll grab the, actually not the dark red, I think I want the cadmium red, and I want the, ooh, what's this one, geranium lake. I like Geranium Lake. I like Geranium Lake because it's a little bit more orangey warm. The uh, dark cadmium is a warmer red also. And I want warmer colors for this. The orange, which is cadmium orange. A dark chrome yellow. Oh yes, I do need a, a darker green. Ooh, maybe not the maybe not that light light green but the earthy green I like that earthier green better earthy green and the dark phalo I think this for the leaves but I do want oh yes I do want some of these bright the brighter green and let's see which blue I think I want it to be kind of a turquoisey cobalt blue these are going to be for the background. Now we've finished drawing it and I am going to take and get a bit of this color out here outside the leaves. I'm just going to sort of mush it on there. I'm not getting this wet until I get everything wet. So, wow. The color's going on really nicely. I'm quite excited about this. This way it uh, has the white that can shine through. So now I'm taking, so that was the light green. Now I've got the cobalt blue and I'm just putting some of that in randomly. So when I get this all wet, I can mush those colors nicely together and it gives you that variation in the background and I will probably use a little bit of these colors in the actual leaves here and there just so it feels like everything goes together there taking the phthalo dark and I'm going to just color it in that's one of the cool things here is that it's really like doing coloring book on a rock. And I love the look of these Santorini stones. They come from Greece. That's where Santorini is, is Greece. So they're imported. They actually bring them in in big slabs like tiles and use them for floors and um, beautiful beautiful walls and things like that. So, you know, do it, using them for painting on like this is sort of a byproduct. It's those bits and pieces that got broken that they didn't have a way to sell as easily. So now 
that's just going to sit right sit right there like that. I'm going to take the dark chrome yellow and I'm going to put a base coat of dark dark chrome yellow, which is a very orangey color over most of this. And I'm rolling my pencil around. I'm not just rubbing it off in one spot on this pencil. So that way it keeps it sharper. So if I need to get in there and do some details, I can. But this is this is very much the way I do my pen and ink stuff when I'm using colored pencil uh, or watercolor pencils. I like to make an outline. I like to make a, um, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of this walnut to make my shadow in there underneath of that leaf. So when I do art games and things like that, where people call out different, um, different subjects and then you have to draw it and color it well I always color them I always color them with watercolor pencil because it's fast it's easy and it's so pretty and it gives things a certain look now I just drew in some of the veins with the watercolor pencil in the dark walnut and look at that we have this shadow under that leaf sh starting up put a little bit more green in there I know I'm getting a lot of pigment on here and it's gonna move around in different ways so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun now I'm taking some of that uh, earth green in with the dark chrome yellow so that I can have some variation in this leaf I didn't want it to be just a plain yellow and I thought that the green veins would be really pretty so now I think I'm going to take some of this red or uh, I'm taking some of the pale geranium lake because that just mixes so well with that dark chrome yellow and it makes a beautiful orange and even though red and green are complements, I'm using it to my I'm using it to my uh, advantage. There it is. I'm using it to my advantage. I'm allowing the I'm going to allow those colors to sort of blend and mix a little bit because that's how I'm going to get that shadowy edge underneath of the leaf that's on top of it just like that maybe a little bit out here on this edge I think I want the cat orange okay I'm gonna put some cat orange on this one and then take the red the pale geranium lake on it so we're just throwing that color in there and you see we're just just drawing it now you could do this on a piece of paper you could do it on cardstock on um, on watercolor paper you could paint this with watercolor on cards you know paper I haven't tried actual watercolors just straight watercolor on a rock this is my first time even trying watercolor pencil on a rock but it's so fun especially on this kind of rock if this works here well, it's going to work here. I, I know it's going to work. I, I have great faith that this is going to work. I'm keeping the darker vein or darker color down in towards the vein. I'm letting it lighten up here in the middle and then I might take a darker color down around that edge again. And the same out here, a little bit darker around the edge let it work in and then I'm going to put a bit of that color that's the main color of the leaf out here on the stem like that now I want a little bit of that blue oh yeah see that uh, 
cobalt blue actually mixes with that earthy green and it makes a lovely turquoise on that leaf. There we go. And now I'm going to take the mid cadmium because that's my darkest red. And I'm going to use that for the veins here. We're just going to get some veins going out, sort of curving up and over so it looks like the leaf has a bit of shape. And I hope you don't mind that I'm kidnapping you on my little coloring adventure here. Now, I'm just going to use a water brush. Water brushes are so fun for these types of techniques because you don't have to have a whole bunch of you don't have to have a whole bunch of brushes to do this now i'm just getting i'm squeezing right here where it says push and just squeezing the water down to the tip and making sure that it's really wet all the way through on a cloth now this is an Arte an arteza water brush I really like these. I like that it has a valve. I like that it has the valve right here and that you push this so that you can squeeze the water out to the tip instead of just um, having the water flowing. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start out here. Getting the that blue you can, you can be selective in how you get it wet. You don't have to just get the whole thing wet. You can be selective. You can choose to wet right up to the edge, just like doing it on paper. It, wow, it flows on here so well. Sometimes you'll want to wipe your brush off. And if you, if you pick up color that you didn't intend, you can just wipe it off. But I'm just... Because I didn't have too much of the teal on there that time, I'm able to get my green. But look how lovely that is. And there's no scribbles. There's no pencil scribble in, in this water. It is blending so nicely and I want this lovely soft mottled background very watercolory but I'm trying to not get the the leaf wet yet I just want the background and that's something you could do to actually make your picture too, is you could just draw and leave the, the drawing and watercolor your background. I'm going to rotate this to make it easier for my hand. Always work to your advantage. Don't, don't think that you can't move your paper or move your rock or whatever you're working with move it make it easy for you okay now we're almost all the way around i love how the water is moving the paint on here the pigment that is so fun And then I'll come back around and get the rest of that light green because I didn't realize that I would be able to move it so nicely. You can re-wet your paints on the rocks and you could use the ink tents that that would not re-wet. So ink tents would probably be even better than these pencils. 
I will need to give this a light spray with a sealer before I do a finished coat. And I didn't want to end up with a really heavy background. I, I want this to show some of the sparkle and it looks like it's going to show the sparkle through the paint really, really well. So, all right, so now I wanna start working on these leaves and I think, hmm, I think I wanna start from the dark leaf and work my way around again. So this leaf, I'm going to be selective in how I touch the paint again. Oh, that's pretty. I want to leave that walnut brown until the very end. And I just want to barely get that walnut brown wet. And I don't really want to smooth it or smear it around too much, except where it's in the shadow. I want this to be a little bit brighter right there. See? You can do it. You can get things to be the way you want them. A little bit of planning. But look how well this is covering the rock. It goes in and it fills those little tiny nooks and crannies. Oh, yeah. Ooh. We're going to zoom in a little more. I'm going to back up focus a little bit. There we go. Yeah, look at that. So now I'm going to go into the shadow and I'm just touching. I'm not, I'm trying to not smear it. I'm just tapping it right around that edge because what I'm going to do is do this one and then skip over and do the big one and then come back and do the one in the middle. All right, blot that off. And now I want to get the little bit of that brown that's in the center and the veins. But not, you know, I'm not trying to, to do too much with it. I don't want to do too much with it. I want it to just just barely become liquefied. Oh, I am so happy. Oh, this is exciting. I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please click that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you'll get to see more of my videos when they go up. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? I think I might even want to lighten that up on that outside edge just a smidge. And you see how I'm doing that? All I'm doing is going in and lifting up some of the pigment and moving it around with the brush, just like you would on paper. But the, on here, it's not going to pill up and you can scrub it as much as you want and it's not going to hurt the rock. <laughs> I love that. All right, so now we're going to go to the big one. But I forgot, I wanted to put a little bit of that, uh, that dark chrome yellow out here to give me some bright yellow highlight and a little bit up down here. So now we're going to get this one. And I am, ooh, look at that color. I think there was probably going to be a little bit of splattery type stuff going on. I'm not positive. There might not be, but I kind of think there will be because I like the texture that you get on the leaves with that splatter. But again, I'm not doing all of that veining part right now. I'm just getting it wet on the body of the leaf. Oh, this is so yummy. I love these colors. So there, I think I'm gonna leave that bright orange bit, the cad 
not the cad, the uh, chromium orange or chromium. No, it was dark cadmium orange, dark cadmium orange. And then the chrome yellow. This is so pretty. And really, this is, once you've got your drawing on here, it's color book. And I will, if you're interested, let me know in the comments below if you're interested in seeing me transfer maybe a little bit more detailed of a picture onto one of these rocks that we can do some pen and ink and watercolor on. I think that this would be really fun to do some pumpkins and it would be really pretty for some underwater so i think maybe some jellyfish or a seahorse let me know in the comments below all right now we're going to go ahead and start putting in some of that shadow by getting the dark cadmium red Blend it out just a smidge, just like this. And I am much more of an illustrator type watercolorist. I am not, as, as of yet, I am not uh, really loose. I, I have more, more of a tighter illustration style and that's okay you know I am NOT apologizing for having the style that I have no there is no need to apologize for the style that you have your style is the way you do things and that is wonderful and don't let anybody tell you different you know your style is the way you do it People are always saying, well, how do I find my style? Truthfully, you find your style by doing your art. And you're going to naturally just start gravitating to certain ways of doing things. Your style could just be a technique that you love. That you always do it in a certain way. Look at that. Ooh. Just get that color damp and then I can blend it I can thin it out to the point I can bring it back down in neat thing about it is it's almost like you're you're just painting on your palette but it does have a bit of tooth so it does grab the color and I am so so excited about that I can see this being something that I am going to um, get possibly get a little obsessed with, even if I don't show it all on video. And that would be up to you guys if you wanted to see lots of these kinds of rocks being painted. I did a search and did not find anybody hardly at all showing how to paint on Santorini rocks. I found people painting pictures of Santorini <laughs> but it wasn't the same thing as painting pictures on the rocks so there we are and now let's see oh my goodness this is this video is taking a while so I hope you don't mind that this is a longer longer video But, you know, if you would rather see a speed video of this, let me know, and I will post a speed video on my Facebook page. So you can see, uh, see this done quickly if you want. Like I said, I won't post it on my Facebook page for sure as a speed video until you let me know. Now, I might do it as a faster video on my Facebook page just in general where I show uh, quickly coloring and where I show 
quickly watercoloring, but I'll talk a little bit. I may just do a voiceover on it. But this is so much fun. I love the texture that this leaf is getting. This is making me really happy. And by laying the colors all in, I can allow them to mix and do some neat things here right on the rock that I wouldn't get necessarily if I was doing this with a paint palette because I'm getting some micro mixes right here on the rock that are so cool. All right, I think, ooh, so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of lifting out a bit of the color or pushing some of the color around. Ah, that does. Okay, so taking my brush right on the tip and we get a nice splatter. I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of that Ooh, just like that and we'll see you know it's going to dry lighter So I'm not, I think maybe a couple darker, darker spots here and there. That really starts looking more autumn-y as the leaves start to uh, get crunchy. All right. I am so excited. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. So if you like this, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. If you want to see more of me doing watercolor pencil or watercolor or acrylic on the Santorini stones, make sure and let me know in the comment section below. And as always, go out do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.